Thank you very much. I'm sure that you have no idea how words like that make a father feel. I'm very grateful that God has given us, Ruth and me, five wonderful children, 19 grandchildren, of which some of them are here tonight. I don't know how many great-grandchildren. A lot of them. And they're still on the way. Now tonight, I want you to turn with me to the 24th chapter of Matthew. For if that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. Yes, there's coming a day when this world is going to go through another terrible event, the coming judgment of God. And we're told to prepare to meet God. That's what I want you to do tonight. Prepare to meet him. There was a story a few months ago entitled, What the Bible Says About the End of the World. And it headlined, The Way the World Ends, the article said, that the third millennium brings with it visions of peace, apocalyptic terror, and a stream of new books about the last days. There's a tremendous interest in the last days and in the end of the age. For years, we believed that the threat of a nuclear holocaust was diminishing. But then nuclear tests by several countries raised fears that an incident somewhere in the world could still plunge us into global catastrophe. Almost all would agree that the end of the world as we know it, our age, the end of it is a possibility. In the New Testament of the Bible, the new birth is mentioned nine times. Repentance is mentioned 70 times. The second coming of Jesus Christ is mentioned 380 times. That's the importance that God puts on the fact that Jesus is going to come again and we are to prepare to meet him. Now, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, he goes back hundreds of years to draw the analogy. In Noah and Genesis, the sixth chapter, you read about it. The appalling conditions are summed up in the terrible words. Wickedness, evil imagination, corruption, violence. Every imagination of man's thought was evil, the scripture says. It was a world in which marriage was abused. It was a world in which violence prevailed. It was a world with a decadent religion. It was preoccupied with material things and so absorbed that they forgot God. They were so taken up with everyday living that they left God out of all their planning. It was a world threatened by the judgment of God. God warned them, repent, turn from your sins, turn from your evil ways, and I will forgive you because I love you all. But they didn't do it. And God warned them time after time. And there was one man that lived in that kind of a world. His name was Noah. Now he believed in God. And true belief determines how you live. He lived a disciplined life. He was a man of moral integrity. He worshiped God. He had a time every day that he gave in worship and prayer. He dared to stand alone. He was a nonconformist. The Bible says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark or a ship. 
because God said, I'm going to destroy the whole world with a flood. And the Bible says that Noah was frightened. That word could be terrified. Noah was terrified when he heard that from God. And so God said, Noah, you have lived for me. You are loyal to me. In spite of all the pressures and the temptations you have, you are living a life for me. And I want to save you and your family. So I want you to start building a ship. Make it of gopher wood. Hold it together with pitch. Make it 450 feet long, 45 feet high, 75 feet wide, three stories high. Put in it one window, just one window, and one side door. That's all. And I want you to bring two of every living creature into this ship. And I'm going to save you and them. And the flood is going to destroy everyone else. And in the middle of all that, Noah began to preach. He warned people. He said, repent, come to God while you can. Come into the ark and be saved. It's going to come a terrible storm and an awful flood. Nobody believed him. They scoffed at him. Even the carpenters who were helping him build the ark, and he was paying them union wages. They, they didn't believe him. But eventually, the judgment began. One day, they were all laughing and talking and having their good time. And somebody said, look, go beyond them. There they could see a cloud, no bigger than a man's hand, but it kept growing. And it was getting blacker and darker. And they became frightened. And God is warning us in this generation that judgment is coming. The only bright spot in the horizon that I see is the coming again of Jesus Christ. It's not going to be in some peace conference. How many peace conferences have we held in the Middle East? Just in our lifetime. And so many of them are broken even before they sign them. You've come to this crusade tonight probably expecting to live many more years, but you don't know. Don't put it off. You may not have another moment like tonight.